Psalms chapter 23 verse 3 says, He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Number four, the quality of a good shepherd. As we already saw from Psalms chapter 23 verse 1 and 2 that when the Lord is our shepherd, we will lack nothing. And he will lead us in green patches and he will lead us beside still waters. And number four, God says, He restores my soul. David says, the only person, the only one who could restore me, my soul, is God alone because he is my shepherd. We have people to restore the body. The work of a medical personality, you may be a doctor or you may be someone working in the medical field, a nurse or, uh, or, or, or somebody from the medical field. Your call may be to uh, work towards the healing of the physical body. But Psalmist is going little further than a physical healing. Well, he knew that God can heal physically, but he also knew the only person who can heal us spiritually and restore our soul is the ultimate God. Now comes the question, what is a soul? Where did the soul come from? And where does it go once a person dies? For that we need to go back to the scripture from the beginning. The Bible says that God made man in his likeness and he breathed his life, his breathing into man and man became a living soul. So there was something, an object there. God formed us like him from, uh, from dust in his image and he gave his breath of nostrils, his breath of life into us. And when he gave that breathing into us, we started breathing and then we became a living soul. So what does happen to the soul once a person dies? Bible says the body that came from the dust will return back to the dust. And then the, 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 the breath that came from God, it goes back to him. So now comes the question, where does the soul go? Does the soul go to heaven or to hell? Or to purgatory, where does the soul go? Bible says the soul, the breath which comes from God goes back to him. So there is no soul there. And once when God comes to claim you and me as his personal, as we wait upon him and believe in him, and when we die in Christ, the one who died in Christ will rise first. And then we all will be there in heaven with the twinkling of an eye. Within a fractions of seconds, we are going to be with the Father in heaven. That's a promise. My dear child of God, Bible says, what is the use of a man gaining the whole world and losing his own soul? So today, if a person is working for a nation, if a person is dying for his nation in the military, it's no harm, it's no, no bad, I won't say it's bad, but if I die for my nation, if I die for my nation, and if I don't die in Christ, Bible says, those who die in Christ shall rise first. So you soldiers, you government officials, as you're listening to me, it's good to work for the nation, it's good to work for the government, but when I die, I need to die in Christ. I won't rise again if I die only for the nation. I won't raise again if I die only for my creed and caste and religion or whatever it may be, you list down. But Bible is very clear. It does not mean how you die, when you die, but it matters a lot in whom you die. So Bible says, what is the use of a person gaining the whole world and losing his own soul? Hitler, a person who tried to conquer the whole world when he was only 33 years old. At the end of his life, when he fell sick, he gave, he called for the medical personalities and told, well, I give you anything, whatever you want, whatever you ask, I'm willing to give. Can you give me life back? And the medical personality said, we are sorry, King. We are sorry, Master. We couldn't do that one. 
And you know, he asked his people, his authorities, his officers, when I die, make me a nice coffin. But make sure you make two holes on either side of me. I want to leave my hands out just like that and go, which symbolized that I gained the whole world. But I'm going empty-handed. Bible says, what is the use of a person gaining the whole world and losing his own soul? Salvation is very personal. And that psalmist understood. And I have to work for my salvation. I have to confess my sins. Likewise, you have to confess your sin. And you have to look into your own salvation. I can't predict and judge that you won't be saved. You are a sinner. You are no good. No, that's not my call. And that does not support from the Bible. You have to look into yourself. When many came together and was trying to stone at a prostitute, Jesus was there. And they asked Jesus, what should we do with this person? She was caught red-handed doing prostitution. Well, Jesus asked those people around him, if there is no sin in you, whoever is standing over here, if there is no sin in you, you stone at this woman for the first time, for first. And then he saw there was nobody there. They all walked away. Then Jesus bent down and the Bible says he wrote something, he scribbled. And he looked into the woman and said, Woman, neither me condemn you. Go and sin no more. Here Sami says, this good shepherd restores my soul. Only God can restore you. God can restore us. Satan will destroy you. He can destroy me if I don't have Lord as my shepherd. He wants to destroy your peace. He wants to destroy your ministry. He wants to destroy your health. He wants to destroy your family. He wants to destroy your happiness. But this good shepherd wants to heal you, give you good food, good food, lead you beside still waters and he wants to restore you not only physical healing the bible talks about the spiritual healing too so this psalmist david understood that amidst of all my sins and shortcomings when i have confessed everything to the lord god alone can restore me from all my sins and shortcomings and he understood that one and that's what he was trying to say in this particular psalm and then further he talks about on the third verse, on the second phrase, he, he guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. God is righteous. In him, there is no sin. He is the only righteous judge. And he is righteous. And his judgment is righteous. So God expects us to be righteous. We, before we point somebody others, we have to look in who we are right now. And he expects us to walk in the paths of righteousness, do justice. As I was reading Exodus chapter 15 verse 26, it says, listen to the word of God diligently and do things which is pleasing in his sight and listen to his commandments and do all his status. And then God will not pass the curse that he passed upon the Egyptians for God himself will be a God of restoring. Bible says, he leads me in the paths of righteousness. So if I need to, walk in the paths of righteousness right the lord has to be my shepherd god expects righteousness in you god expects righteousness in me for that i can't condemn you neither condemn neither you can condemn me bible says he alone is righteous and when we have him as our shepherd he will lead us in the paths of righteousness according to his word would you like to join with me as we pray together heavenly father Thank you for our, our shepherd. Thank you, Lord, that you want to be our shepherd. Thank you, Lord, that you want to restore our soul. Restore us from all our sins and our, from our filthiness. And lead us in the paths of righteousness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.